Hello, JupiterCon. Uh, my name is Dahas Patina, and uh, today Amit, Chris, and I are going to talk to you about uh, QHub. Uh, I'm also crediting UV Panda on this talk, even though he's not going to be speaking because he was instrumental in a lot of the early work for QHub. QHub started out uh, with me being very annoyed. Uh, I came from an HPC background, and while HPC has its own problems, uh, getting compute is relatively easy once you are have access to a nice HPC system. This wasn't true um, in the cloud. Uh, deploying and using a data science platform in the cloud is annoyingly hard. We decided to try and do something about it and automate it. Um, so we are now announcing QHub. It's an open source project that hopefully allows you to deploy and manage um, your cloud compute, um, even if you don't have much of a DevOps background or anyone in your organization with a DevOps background. At its core, we're using an infrastructure as code or a GitOps approach where everything, um, and this, this is because deploying a platform is great, but the biggest problem is keeping it going and maintaining it. Um, so the way we have um, built our system is everything base is based off a single config file. And as we change that config file, it uses GitHub actions to auto redeploy um, the platform onto DigitalOcean or AWS or Google Cloud, whichever one you prefer. It provides quite a few things. Uh, the biggest things is a scalable JupyterHub installation with integrated Dask. Uh, so you can do large uh, big data com computations. Uh, you have shell access through kube SSH, um, access to different instance types. Um, this, this was actually very useful to us. We built in the ability to have full Linux style permissioning, which enables you to have uh, shared folders and other things for different user groups. And Conda environments on Kubernetes are an immense pain. And so uh, we ended up actually building two new uh, open source packages to help deal with Conda environments, Conda Store and Conda Docker. We're not going to go through all of these in the rest of this demo, but Chris and Amit are going to show you two demos. Hello, everyone. I am Amit, and I'm a software engineer at Consight. I'll be giving a very quick demo on deploying QHub. For simplicity, we'll be using DigitalOcean for this demo. This is how the file is referred to look like. Let's take a quick look at checklist of all the things you're going to need. You need to install QHub. You can do it by pip or you can install it from GitHub. You need a kip QHub config file, which is the source of truth for all of your infrastructure. You will need GitHub OAuth application for authentication, and you will need DigitalOcean secrets for deploying on DigitalOcean and a domain for hosting QHub and Terraform for deploying the infrastructure. Let's take a quick look at how config file looks like. This is the authentication details for GitHub. We are using GitHub OAuth, and this is the OAuth application I just created. And these are the users who can access QHub. This includes Kubernetes config for DigitalOcean, and the Docker images for Jupyter and Dask, and the profiles for JupyterLab and Dask Worker. These are the content environments. I have two content environments in here. One is default, another one is example two. So we'll be using this config file to generate our project. So for that, you need to run this command, qhub render dash c, which, which is the config file, and then our output directory, and force will override anything in that directory. This is how the directory structure would look like. So these are the Terraform state and infrastructure it includes the Terraform files for the infrastructure. So this is the state, basically state stores the state of the whole infrastructure. So let's create this, this first. For that, you need to run this Terraform init and apply. The state bucket is now created on DigitalOcean. Now let's create the infrastructure. For that, you need to go to the infrastructure directory and run the same Terraform commands. This could take up to 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm going to pause the video. The deployment is complete, and this is the Terraform output, which is basically the IP address of the load balancer. Now we need to create a record in our DNS provider for us to be able to access QHub. The C name would be jupyter.demo.qhub.dev. So I should be able to access QHub on this C name. This could take a few minutes based on your DNS provider. The DNS changes are live now. Now we can access QHub on jupyter.demo.qhub.dev. I can sign in with GitHub because I had my user ID added in the config. Let's create a small instance. This comes from the profile in the config. In 
this is JupyterLab and we have a couple of Conda environments in here, which comes from the config as well. Let's try one of them. And also let's import task here. Task gateway. And let's create a gateway and check out some cluster options. You can see you have a couple of worker profile, which also comes from config, and you have a couple of Conda environments, which also comes from config, so you can instantiate your workers with these. Since now we have instantiated our project, now we can commit this into a GitHub repository. So let's create one. And we can create a repository now which will be Jupyter con QHub demo. This will be private for now, but by the time you will see this video, it will be public. Let's add our gene and push them to the GitHub. Now we have the entire state of the infrastructure in this Git repository. Any changes to the infrastructure can be made via pull request and they'll be executed via GitHub Actions. Now Chris will talk more about QHub and Conda Store and Conda environments. Thank you. Now that Amit has given a demo on how to deploy QHub on DigitalOcean, I wanted to show how we can update the configuration. One of the things that we found while um, at Quonsite and deploying these Jupyter Hub clusters for many different customers is that we needed to add new users, add new packages, customize the compute environments um, through time. And this really hits at that. I think the hardest part about infrastructure deployments is day two onwards. So in this demo, um, we've taken the configuration that Amit wrote and we've added um, Tony as a new user. Um, this is one of the features of QHub is that users actually have full Linux permissioning built in, so they get a UID and groups associated with them. Um, in this case, we're making their primary group ID users and then secondary group Quonsite. Um, we can also see that we added a Quonsite group, and we'll see later um, the special um, or the nice nice things that we get with having groups and shared folders. And then finally, um, I also wanted to show a critical piece of updating the environment. So here we've added Flask to our development environment. So now that we've made these changes, we'll commit them. So adding environment package Flask and new user Tony. Once we commit to master, it kicks off a job that then will render the configuration changes to the repo. And in this case, you can see it in this step right here. And then finally, the changes are pushed back to the repo, which then kicks off a job to update the infrastructure itself on DigitalOcean. We do this via Terraform. Um, so we have an apply step, and typically this takes several minutes. Once that's complete, users can um, continue their regular usage of Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Hub. It's not going to be interrupted um, by the upgrade process. Um, I just wanted to show here some of the, the changes that we just made. So we added Flask to the user's environment, which in the default environment imports correctly. Then, as I mentioned before, we added the user Tony. Um, so we are using full Linux permissioning um, running inside of Kubernetes here. So we have a nice way to give each user a unique identity and take advantage of protecting folders, making them read-only, et cetera. QHub creates a shared directory that can be used by all JupyterHub users. Inside of there, there is also a directory that is created for each group. And these groups are permissioned in such a way that only members of those groups can 
go within them. And this is enforced regularly by JupyterHub. So there is a nice and convenient way to isolate and share files in a protected manner between all users. Earlier, I showed Condostore running within QHub. For now, the main feature is that it allows you to update the Conda environments independently from the Docker containers that users in their JupyterLab sessions. However, the goal of Condostore is actually much larger than this. So the best way I thought to show this is through a quick little demo. So here we see the web UI that is exposed by Condostore. There is also a RESTful API, and soon there is going to be a Docker registry exposed as well. So the best way to think of this is Conda Store will build a set of environments from given specifications. So this data science environment has a specification here. That given specification um, was built during this time. It also um, keeps track of all the packages that are in this given environment. And then the most important part is Conda Store's main goal is to make it such that people can reproducibly get the given environment. Um, there are several ways that this is done. One of them is that it exposes a lock file. And this lock file is expired by a lot of the work here um, for Conda lock. And then, then there is an archive, which is a basically a tarball of the given Conda environment. And this is using the awesome work of Conda pack. And then finally, there is a Docker image. Right now, you can download it. And this is off of the work that Anthony and I have been doing on building Conda environments uh, via Docker in a very efficient manner. So hopefully you can see that um, we have done some pretty interesting work and we would love for all of you to get involved with it too. Uh, the best way to get involved is contribute to any of the upstream projects QHub depends on. Uh, DAS Gateway, Jupyter Hub, uh, there's, there's quite a few that we're strongly dependent on. And contributing to any of those would make QHub a better product. Also, try QHub and let us know when it breaks. We've used it very effectively with several clients, and we use it internally for our training and uh, as an internal platform for OnSite. Uh, but we also built it, so we know its rough corners and its edges. And we're sure when you guys try it out, you will find new ways to break it. And we'd love to hear what those are so we can improve it. And we also would love for you guys to help us uh, push it forward. And we have this... Um, desire to make having a scalable data science platform in the cloud be in the reach of anyone. And uh, we have ideas on our roadmap to kind of improve it. And we'd love to hear from you guys and uh, totally happy to accept contributions. Um, you can see we have uh, we're, uh, GitHub, re read the docs link uh, to get climatized. We also just started a Gitter channel. So if you want to have a more um, dynamic chat, that's where we could have that. Um, anyway, thank you for listening to us and I hope uh, you have a great JupyterCon.